adventurous, explorers, missionaries, hunters, restless people who needed wide horizons. This is a story of such people. Seven rally teams who survived the most grueling motoring event of them all, the 1963 East African Safari Rally, 3,200 miles over the toughest, most unpredictable roads in the world. There is intense activity in the garages as drivers and mechanics make last-minute preparations to their cars before leaving Nairobi. There are 84 entries, cars from Britain, France, Germany, Italy, Sweden and Japan. As the starting time draws near, tension mounts, and the driver's silent prayer is that there is still time to complete the list of jobs remaining to be done. The ladies are here too. This toughest of rallies was once thought to be suitable for men only, but drivers such as Pat Moss and Ann Riley have shown that they can give the men more than a run for their money. The Moss-Riley team are driving one of the Ford Cortinas on this rally. Local driver Peter Hughes has taken part in eight safaris, always in Anglias. Peter Riley and David Markham are both old rally hands. The cars are ready now and prepare for the official scrutineering. Scrutineering is thorough, even to the use of radioactive paint to prevent the possibility of replacement parts being fitted en route. Members of the Ford team are on hand to see their cars through this final stage. The cars are as perfect as mechanical skill can make them. Now it's up to good driving and judgment with a large slice of luck for good measure. The Thursday before Easter and the start of the rally. European rally champion Eric Carlson, in his two-stroke Saab, number four, is amongst the early starters. This is the route which faces them, starting from Nairobi with the Singh Brothers Fiat 2300 into Kaptowa. There are papers to be stamped, times recorded, a chance to stretch one's legs. And then off again non-stop to the next control. Up in the hills, it's 